So this is part two of how the refrigerator works and how to fix them. So this lesson's about how they're wired. Just the typical way most have been wired over the last 40 or 50 years, not the way the computerized ones are wired that have all the sensors and electronics. Everyone's wired different when they're like that. And they're much more complex even though they work the same way. And this is also to show you how all the Freon plumbing works in the fridge. So first of all, at the bottom of the back of the fridge, you have a compressor. Somewhere inside the fridge, there's a thermostat. That could be in the fridge box or the freezer box. And there's a fan. And then somewhere on the upper part of the cooling coil is this little disc-shaped thing with two wires. That's what it looks like. That's called the uh, defrost termination thermostat. As you can see, they have numbers. 55 is when it sh opens the circuit and shuts off, and minus 20 Fahrenheit is when it closes and turns itself back on. I'll explain that later. And they have a timer. It uses just a little clock motor, you know, a 110 volt AC clock motor, and inside there is two sets of contacts, an input pole, and then a switch that swings one way or swings the other way to make contact here or here on these two terminals. That's the center terminal, and the other terminal is a neutral terminal just to run power to the clock motor. This particular model of fridge, the timer's inside that cover in the top of the fridge compartment beside the light bulb. The other part of the fridge in the electrical circuit is called the mullion heater. That's a little heater that keeps this warm between the two doors so that you don't get sweatiness forming there and just dripping and running down your fridge and rusting it. Some fridges have an energy saver switch, which has nothing to do with the cooling system or the compressor or anything like that. It's just when the weather is dry, or especially in the winter time, you don't need this little heating device on all the time that uses several watts of energy. So you just switch it off. This becomes room temperature. And under most circumstances, when it's dry out, it won't drip. Well, the other electrical part in your fridge is the heating element, and it's always at the bottom of the cooling radiator or evaporator. This one looks like the one on top of a stove element. And this is another kind, the one that looks like it's inside of a glass tube. Here's how the electrical system in your fridge works. You have your neutral power wire, which is often white colored. It attaches basically to everything all the time. So it goes to the light inside your fridge, goes to the mullion heater. It's in between your two doors. It goes to one side of the defrost heater that's inside underneath your freezing coil goes to the fan motor and it goes around to the little electric timer motor that I just showed you and took there all the time. The hot wire which is often black or in, usually in Canada at least 115 volts well it goes up to a switch that goes to the lamp inside that's your door switch it goes directly to the mullion heater because usually when fridges are plugged in that little bar between the doors is hot all the time there's no switch on it then it goes to the fridge thermostat out of the fridge thermostat is power to the timer so the timer only runs when the fridge is turned on it also sends power to the center pin on that timer like I showed you and when the switch is switched one way like to here it makes the fan and the compressor run at the same time so long as the thermostat is telling it to turn on and when the switch is flipped the other way for the defrost cycle that happens every 12 hours it sends power to the defrost heater but no power to the fan and the compressor and that usually lasts 20 minutes and that's controlled by a safety device called the thermost defrost termination thermostat so when it gets warm enough in there it won't start cooking food in there and catching the fridge on fire it shuts off and it won't reset itself again until it got very cold in there so basically this is what's happening every time you open your door in your fridge your light comes on your mullion heater is turned on all the time unless you have a switch to shut it off like an energy saver switch this thermostat controls how often the compressor runs and the compressor and fan motor always run together unless it's a computer operated fridge. Every time 12 hours rolls around this switch goes click and it switches off the compressor and the fan and it turns on the heating element 
it's below the cooling coil and when it gets warm enough in there and all the ice is melted if it can all melt in 20 minutes then this defrost termination thermostat shuts this off and then a short time later this switches the fridge back on so the compressor can run so long as the thermostat is still telling it to turn on. Now compressors have always three pins on them. There's start, run, and common. That's what they're called. They have a starting relay on them which gives extra current to one of the pins just to get it running and sometimes there's a capacitor in that circuit too. It's usually a black cylinder made of plastic and there's the other part called the overload on this one it goes to the bottom pin and that's what you hear when your fridge gets turned off and then it gets turned back on right away before the pressure can drop it, your fridge will be going mm, trying to start and then it'll go click and cut out and when this thing gets too hot because there's too much pressure to start the fridge because it hasn't balanced itself yet this is what shuts it off and saves the compressor from keep trying to start itself and burn out and that's always in a little plastic box for safety purposes when a fridge is running, there's about 125 psi pressure in the condensing coil and there's only 4 psi pressure in the cooling coil, the evaporator. So for whatever reason, when that power is interrupted and the fridge shuts off for any length of time, there's a lot more pressure on one side of the compressor than on the other, the low side and the high side. Well, the compressor isn't that strong for, in order to make them more energy efficient. So there, it doesn't have enough power to start up against all that back pressure, like 125 PSI, trying to push the piston back down the other way that's inside there. So that's why they have to wait anywhere from 2 minutes to 10 minutes before they'll restart. And in between that time, you might hear them going, mm, click. Next lesson, we'll be teaching you on how to solve all the electrical problems your fridge could have.